Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Govardhan Puja and heavy rain. Supposed to be the rain is supposed to be before the puja, right? Right, there's heavy rain from Indra, and when it's all settled down, then they do Govardhan Puja. It's like that. We have the rainy season, and when the rainy season is settled down and finished, then we do Govardhan Puja. But here we have the, the Tamil rainy season seems to have begun early, southeast monsoon, is it? You don't know. We have to ask a meteorologist. Anyway, at least it's not rain like uh, Indra sent. Okay. If he sends, then Giri. Giri Raj Govardhana Dhari, Krishna will protect. There are many verses in Shastra, and many are glorifying Govardhan, and many narrations in Shastra about. Govardhan and many prayers and poems in glorification of Lord Sri Krishna who lifts Govardhan Hill. The most famous verse, oh, I got written there. Do you want to you want to chant it all together then? Hantaya Madrira Bala Haridasavaryo Yadrama Krishna Charana Sparasha Pramodaha Mananta noti sahago ganayas toyoryat Pani asuyava sakandara kanda mulai. This verse is spoken by the gopis of Vrindavan praising Giriraj Govardhan as the best devotee or the best servant, literally of Hari because well I'll read I'll read this standard translation I believe this is given by Srila Prabhupada because this verse comes in the part of the Bhagavatam which Srila Prabhupada didn't translate but it also comes in Sri Chaitanya this verse is also quoted in as as one of the texts of Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrita Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Chatak Parvat in Puri mistook the sand dunes, or maybe he didn't mistake, they, they were actually right, non different from Govardhan, and he recited this verse. Of all the devotees, the gopis say, who are the best devotees? The gopis. What do they say? Of all the devotees, this Govardhan hill is the best. And they're not just saying it. We might say, oh, you're the best devotee but they're going to substantiate it. Why? Oh, my friends, they're calling out Abala. They're calling out, Abala means woman, so they're calling out to each other. Uh, oh, my friends, this hill supplies Krishna and Balaram along with their calves, cows, and cowherd friends with all kinds of necessities. It's not something theoretical. It's very practical how Govardhan serves the Lord. Water for drinking, very soft grass, caves, the caves are very nice because in the rain you can take shelter. In the summer when it's too hot you can take shelter from the burning sun. And in the winter when it's cold you can also go in the cave. The cave is temperature controlled. It's cool in the summer and warm in the winter. So caves, fruits, flowers and vegetables and it, it, in this way becomes a pastime place for Krishna who usually strolls on Govardhan with his cows and there are other days also Krishna sometimes performs Ras Lila with the gopis on Govardhan. So it be, it's a place of Krishna's pastimes. And Govardhan also, uh, to serve Krishna, goes above Krishna, right? When Krishna holds Govardhan, so he's fully surrendered servant. Usually the, the servants, they want to serve the lotus feet of Krishna. But because Govardhan had to act 
as a, an umbrella. So he consented to be above Krishna. Normally the devotees won't want to be above Krishna. Because the demigods also come in the sky for different when there are different pastimes and they they shower flowers. So they do also, taking their position as demigods and interacting or respecting Krishna, taking the position like a human. So continuing the translation of this verse, in this way the hill offers respects to the Lord being touched by the lotus feet of Krishna and Balaram. Govardhan hill appears very jubilant. His hairs are standing on end. It means the grass. From Brihad Bhagavatamrita of Sanatan Goswami. He has a verse here. Govardhano, Govardhano Jayati Shaila Kuladhi Rajo Yogopika Bhirudito Haridasa Varyaha. Krishnena Shakramaka Bhanga Kitar Chito Ya Sabtaham Asya Karapadma Tale Pyavat Seat. Glorious is Sri Govardhan, the great king in the dynasty of hills, whom the gopis praised as the best of Krishna's servant, servants, who was resting for seven days in Krishna's lotus hand, and whom Krishna made worshipable by disrupting Indra's sacrifice. So in Indra's sacrifice, there was worshipping Indra. But instead, Govardhan became worshipped on Krishna's suggestion and became worshipable for all time by... Uh, serving Krishna and all the residents of Rindavan by becoming an umbrella. So he was, already bef he was already the greatest devotee by by providing all the necessities. And then he did an unprecedented, unimagined service. <clears throat> Here's a prayer for those who daily worship Govardhan Shila, which they daily uh, recite in the in the puja. Saptaham eva chuta hasta pankaje, bringamanam palamula kandarai, sang manam harim atma vrinda kair, Govardhan adrim shirasanamami. Uh, so this is also redolent of the Hantaya Majir verse. Um, I bow my head, Shirasa Namami, and offer obeisances to Giriraj Govardhan, who rested upon the lotus hand, the lotus hand of Achuta for seven days, who Govardhan is embellished with the humming of black bees, and who expertly serves Hari and his dearest devotees by provi providing caves and kunjas which supply an abundance of varieties of fruits, flowers and roots for their enjoyment. Uh, a verse from Garga Sanghita. Namo Vrindavanankaya Tubhyam Goloka Maulinay Purna Brahma Tapatraya Namo Govardhanayacha Obeisances to you, Govardhan, who are the lap of Vrindavan, the crown of Goloka, and the umbrella of the Supreme of the Supreme Truth, the Purna Purna Brahma. Mm. He's sheltering the Supreme Truth, who shelters everyone. Now, the gopis, they're well known with this uh, Hantayam verse for glorifying Krishna, Govardhan, Govardhan. And we have from Preo Bhakti Rasarnava, which is a treatise on Preo Bhakti, or the, 
the cowherd boys, their mood of worship of Krishna. So the cowherd girls glorify Govardhan and the cowherd boys glorify him in this way. Namaste Girirajaya Sri Govardhana Namine Ashesha Klesha Nashaya Paramananda Dayane I offer obeisance to you or we offer obeisance to you Giriraj, king of hills who is known by the name of Sri Govardhana Govardhana who makes the increases the cows or uh, makes them prosper ashesha klesha nashaya govardhan govardhan destroys unlimited troubles in the world and paramananda dayene and awards the highest bliss it's, so there are so many uh, so many statements. If we see any lists of names of Krishna, we'll always find the name, something. Giriraj, Giridhari, Govardhana Dhari. And because there are many words for hill, just like Shaila, we're in Salem, which is derived from the word Shaila. Uh, here we have Hantayam Adrir. Adri is also a name for it's a word for hill. So, but the uh, so by combining words for hill and lifting and uh, taking shelter of it, and this way there are many many names. Uh, just something I read the other day in Srila Rupa Goswami's collection of poetry, poetry Stavamala, Krira Gendu Krita Girishvara. Krishna, a name for Krishna, which means Krira, play, Gendu, ball, Krita, made Girishvara, the lord of all the mountains. So Krishna, one name Rupa Goswami has given, he made the king of mountains into just like a toy ball. He's holding up. Even to hold a toy ball for seven days is not easy. But for Krishna, it was very easy. I'm going to read from uh, Srila Prabhupada's arrival a lecture on a farm in Hawaii, in the United States of America, on May the 25th, 1975. And we can, Srila Prabhupada is talking about Govardhan Lila. Govardhana Dharana Leela. There are so many Leelas with Govardhan, but especially we're discussing the the pastime of lifting. The, actually, the Govardhan Puja comes after the lifting, right? When so the, the lift the hill, put the hill back, and no, no, it's round. Sorry, it's round the other way. The the rain comes afterwards. The rain comes afterwards. So Srila Prabhupada is, is saying here. Create Vrindavan, he's saying in America. Create Vrindavan, keep Krishna here, cows here, calves here. Produce your own food. It will become Vrindavan. This is Vrindavan. Where there is Krishna, where there are cows, where there is agriculture, that is Vrindavan. So Srila Prabhupada is saying there's already devotees there, they're already worshipping, already chanting Hare Krishna. So bring the cows and agriculture, and then it will be just like Vrindavan. will be Vrindavan. Where is Krishna? He's in Vrindavan. What happens in Vrindavan? Everyone loves Krishna, and they have cows and agriculture. Actually, not much agriculture in Vrindavan. I mean in Nanda, Nanda Vraja, Nanda Gokula. It's cow protection. We don't hear of them doing the Krishi, the plowing and all this. That's the Balaram, he has his plow, but we don't hear about that. So this is Vrindavan. Where there, yeah, there is Vrindavan. See the life of Krishna. He advised his father to worship 
<coughs> Govardhan Hill. He said, My dear father, Govardhan Hill is giving grass to our cows. Why are, why are you arranging for the demigod worship, for demigod worship of Indra? There is Govardhan Puja. So you should produce enough food grains, enough fodder for the cows and live peacefully, chant Hare Krishna, make this life at least one life we should do like that. It is a very happy life. This is a major part of Srila Prabhupada's program, to make Vrindavan everywhere a replica of Krishna's way of life. So that's one lesson we get from... Uh, Govardhan Lila. Govardhan Lila. What do we learn from this? Uh, generally, on the day of Govardhan Puja, we recite the pastime and we all more or less know the pastime. But Srila Prabhupada, he wanted to uh, instruct through this also. Krishna was also instructing through this, the obvious instruction. There are so many things to learn. When we hear Krishna's pastimes, there are so many things to learn. It's not just stories. Uh, it is stories of the pastimes of Krishna, but so many things to learn. The obvious thing to learn from this is that Krishna is he's not a great promoter of demigod worship. Demigod worship he promotes in the Vedic literature, but it's for the alpamedasa, for people who are not very intelligent. So Krishna has it, okay, you do it, all right. You want to do it, you do it. But I'm not, Krishna is not very much in favor of it. And specifically, he stopped the worship of Indra. Uh, and so, so that's an obvious. Uh, lesson we can learn not to worship demigods no, not just not worship demigods but we should worship Krishna it's not that don't worship demigods then don't worship anyone worshipping demigods is a lot better than not worshipping anyone but really we should worship Krishna for our highest benefit. We should worship Krishna exclusively. Uh, exclusively means Krishna is our object of worship. But that we can also worship demigods in a qualified way. That means that if we recognize that demigods, they're all parts and parcels of Krishna, then when we we may happen to be in the vicinity of a temple of Devi, Durga. Yesterday there was the Kali Puja in Bengal especially. They were doing the Kali Puja, Lokhi Puja, Lakshmi Puja. In Bengal they do especially this. I uh, said so they're, they're doing, but uh, you can do if we recognize this is these are representatives of Krishna. But that's not something to be done regularly by Vaishnavas. Krishna showed that Tadiyanam Samarchanam, Lord Shiva who is known as the greatest demigod, Maheshwara, Parameshwara. He's known as the, the supreme controller. It's true within a limited scope. But the ultimate Parameshwara is Krishna. So he says very famously, when asked by his wife, who is seeing that people are worshipping you, Shiva, they're worshipping me, Durga, they're worshipping Vishnu, they're worshipping Indra, they're worshipping Navagraha, they're worshipping ghosts and spirits, and which is the topmost worship, and Lord Shiva very 
famously said, Aradhananam Saravesham, Vishnu Aradhanam Param, very clear. Of all the types of worship, worship of Vishnu is clear, but there's more to it than that. Tasmat Parataram Devi Tadiyanam Samarchanam. That's the best worship, Vishnu worship. But there is one thing better. Worship of his Tadiya, that which is in relation to him. So Govardhan is uh, more worshipable than Indra. Indra is the uh, king of the demigods. That's Indra means that. So he's a highly respectable person. Just like if the chief minister of Tamil Nadu was to come here, we'd offer him appropriate respect. That is politeness or proper etiquette. <coughs> but we don't worship him on the level of devotion. We don't, our, our worship and our love is for Krishna and the devotees. So Indra must have been astonished as, as well as angry why are they worshipping a hill? What are they doing that? Right? These these hills, I cut I cut them down. That's his one of Indra's job is when the hills are flying around. He cuts off their wings. We don't we don't fight an ex, it seems to be an extinct species, flying hills. At least they don't have their wings left. So Indra saying, What are these people? I'll show them, I'll show them. And Srila Prabhupada commented on this, that uh, from one talk, Srila Prabhupada said, Indra became very much angry and he sent the vicious clouds and the whole of Vrindavan was inundated by floods and Krishna showed that your power is not even competent to compare with the finger of my hand. <laughs> Indra thinks he's so powerful. Uh, with his, he throws his thunderbolt with his hand. But Krishna shows my, my little finger, little finger of my left hand. Generally people are stronger in their right hand than their left hand. <laughs> uh, but he showed, yeah, Indra. <laughs> Indra! <laughs> Oh, it's Indra. Oh, Indra. Oh, it's Indra. I, what do you expect, Indra? Yeah. Okay, let's have some fun. Thanks for sending the clouds. Now I'll be with my devotees for seven days. Thanks. Very nice. So the message is, don't worship demigods. Because one reason is that they're very insignificant in relationship to Krishna. Krishna thought, first of, first of all, when Indra sent these Sangvartaka clouds. It's, it's like a gross overreaction, isn't it? It's just like someone does something a little bit wrong and you want to kill them. There's someone, he was caught, uh, I don't know, stealing, stealing a piece of pan. Okay, execute him. Hang him. It's, a, it's an overreaction, isn't it? Uh, so, Okay, they didn't worship Indra. Okay, send forth the clouds which are meant for the destruction of the whole universe. So it's a bit extreme to say the least. <laughs> so Krishna, at first he thought, well, I'll kill him. And he thought, why should, why should I bother? It's just, there's Indra. You know. Indra is just insignificant. Why should I bother? So one thing is not to worship demigods, they seem very great to us because we're presently incarcerated in a human body on this planet. So they seem very great to us. But in comparison to Krishna, they're just nothing, really insignificant. Same thing, the uh, chief minister of this state, he's, in terms of political power, we don't have any political well, you could vote. That's as much as political power as all of you have got. Uh, I can't vote in this country. Nor can Jai Sachinandan vote in this country. If you go back to Russia, you could vote. And that's as far as your political power goes. 
If you wanted to get into politics, you could. I don't recommend it, but you could do and you could get some political power. But to get to the position of a, actually the, the chief minister of Tamil Nadu, it's in, in many ways you could say it's a bigger position than the head of state of, for instance, Croatia or Slovenia, because the, the population of Tamil Nadu is probably 10 times that of Croatia or more, which means it's probably about 20 times that of Slovenia. Just like uh, talking about Russia, I'll embarrass Jai Sachinandan again. You all know, you probably all know the name of the chief of state of the Russian Federation. Gospodin Putin, right? Mr. Putin. Who knows the name of the head of state of Slovenia? Who knows the name of the head of state of Tamil Nadu? Actually, I don't because there were there was two for a long time, right? There were, either there was Karunanidhi or Amma, and now they're both dead. And someone else, I can't remember his name. He's from Salem, is it? Yes. Yeah, and he'll be thrown out next time, they say. So anyway, I, I don't want to get too much diverted here, but the point is, politically, he's much more powerful than any of us. So we offer him the proper respect. But even compared to the head, of, the head of state of this country, who is, name? It's not Modi. It's the president, whose name is, sounds like Govind, right? Is it still? Hmm? Ah, Govind, Govind. Sounds like... Sounds like Tamil person saying Govind, Kovind. So he's actually the officially the head of state. So uh, so there's a comparison. And then if we say the head of state of India, yeah, it's a big position. India is a big country in the world, but still, it's not as big as the United States head of state or even Russia is considered more powerful and this and that. So there's a hierarchy and Indra is very high. He's the king of the demigods. So if you compare us to the chief minister of Tamil Nadu and then go up to the to the head of state or the prime minister of, of the Republic of India and then compare that with the head of state of the United States of America but they're all, they're all much, much bigger than us. And then the demigods are much, much bigger than them. And Indra is the king of all of them, but they're all, just like we are very insignificant in relationship to the head of, the, the chief minister of this state, so Indra is very insignificant in relationship to Krishna. That we should understand. And even what the demigods give, they give People worship them, they give something, but uh, actually that's given by Krishna. What is that in Bhagavad Gita? My Aiva Vihitan Hitan. They're actually, it's given by Krishna ultimately. Indra can't do anything without Krishna's blessing. So that's, that's an obvious point we take from the Govardhan Puja festival day. The, the Indra's anger didn't happen yet. He's just watching and getting angry. <laughs> and it comes up. It comes up. I was saying the rain comes before, but I, actually I got it wrong, didn't I? The puja comes first and then the rain. Uns uh. <clears throat> Although actually I must say in Bengal, from my experience back in the 1980s mostly, the rain stops and then they have Durga Puja for nine days, and then it starts again. Because right after Durga, Durga Puja, and yeah, it was quite some time afterwards. It should have stopped by now. Unusual rain at this time. So another very uh, important lesson we get from Govardhan Puja is 
to protect cows and more than just protect them is to love the cows. The, the inhabitants of Vrindavan, they love the cows. Now I was just discussing now with Sri Ram. Is he here? No, he's not here. He's translating, yeah. So how are we going to get people to, how are we going to stop cow killing? You can make laws, there are already laws. It's in the constitution, no cow killing. It's going on rampantly in India. How are you going to stop it? Because people think economically it doesn't make sense to keep a cow after she doesn't give milk or doesn't give enough milk. And how we will be finished economically if we keep cows. So we have to demonstrate that economically it makes sense to keep the cow. And he was telling me some plan he has to promote how the uh, cow dung can be, it's, it's economically very much viable that the cow dung can be sold as fertilizer. It needs organization at the state level. Can be done. Uh, so people, they're not going to protect cows out of love because money comes first. That's the way the world is going on at the present time. So at least economically, we have to, we, out, out of economic consideration, because people, they, they can't afford to not sell. The cow killers are very few who actually kill cows. But the Hindus, they'll, they'll sell their cows because they can't afford to keep them after they stop giving sufficient milk. So you have to make an economic arrangement so that the cows can be protected and they won't be sent. Sell them means they get, they anyway, you know what happens after that. Old cows get sold. So, when people live just like we see, there are still cow castes. People in India who, in Gujarat especially, you see there's that one caste. They, they take their cows, they wander here and there. That's what Krishna was doing. Not exactly, because he came back to his house every night, Nanda Bhavan. But this, the real thing is not, not to keep the cows in a goshala. And not even to have fields for grazing them, but to graze them in the forests and the hills, like Govardhan. And then the cows become very healthy by exercise. They naturally, have you seen them? They, they chew a little grass and then they walk a step ahead. And then they chew a little more and they walk a step ahead. And then they may walk a few steps more. And in this way, they're always moving. It's called gocharna. Grazing the cows means to, they, they move here and there. And someone like Krishna has to be there to, and when you've got many, many cows, as in Vrindavan, then there's a whole group of boys who are between them. They herd the cows. And then, they, yeah, so the, these people who keep cows like this, they actually love cows. They, 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 their whole identity is defined by the cows. That's in the Varnashram system. The, say, the, uh, the carpenter, his identity is completely mixed up with his profession. What does he do? That's his contribution to society. And his tools, therefore on the day of Vishvakarma Puja, He'll worship his tool. He'll call a Brahmin to worship his tools. And traditionally, they use very simple tools. They'll just sit on the floor and make all these fabulous Vyasasan and Singhasana and all these things, or whatever, some chair, anything they'll make. Just sitting on the floor, they'll do like that. So whatever, the the uh, the Raja, his he has his symbol, his 
his uh, his scepter, chori. They, they hold this, and and that's the, that's and that's a symbol of their power. And his sword. See, it's complete, just like the Sikhs. They keep their their little knife. It's a symbol. It's part of their identity. So for the cow, keep it. They love the cows. They don't just see that there's some economic model or some economic item, but they they love the cows, and it's just ingrained in their tradition. So they grow up loving cows. So they can't imagine killing them or selling them for killing. But at the present time. Uh, Things have changed. But if we again make, just, just like in the village, every house, they, they'll keep one or two cows. They don't personally, every house has the cow. And then the, the cowman takes out all the cows in the village in the day, brings them back, milks them, and gives the milk like that. So every house has their cows. So that's better than pet dogs, isn't it? <laughs> the cow urine and stool has value. What is the value of the dog urine and stool? It just stinks, that's all. So that's an important lesson. The Govardhan Puja is also the day of Go Puja. And how do we worship the cows? Well, the, most, the, the cows, you can put the fire and this and that, but the thing they're most interested in is in the grass when you feed them. And the gur they love very much. And this if you mustard seed cake and all the, the, the how do you worship them? Well you can you feed them. They like cows their main business is eating most of the day, every day. They're eating and eating. I or they all this and then they sit down and then they're they're chewing. So they like that very much. And they cows, they love their calves. And they'll, they'll lick their calf with great affection. And we can, I'm just saying daily, daily cow worship. You brush the cows. They then fondle them. Of course, many cows, they're so badly treated nowadays, you can't get near them. They're just afraid. They live in fear. It's a very horrible situation. So... As one of the important uh, tasks that Srila Prabhupada left to us is to establish Rindavan villages. Create Rindavan, I just read that. Create Rindavan means cows. Look after them very nicely. So that's another lesson we get from Govardhan Puja. We can think of this day. Now, Another very important lesson, this Govardhan Puja, uh, is the Anukut, which means a hill of rice, which is widely, huge amount of food is cooked. Srila Prabhupada, I remember that must have been 19, was it 1975, I was in England and a letter came to Hansa Dutta, the GBC at Bhaktivedanta Manor where I was, and, and Prabhupada said, for Govardhan Puja, he said how to, how to celebrate. He said there should be heaps of prasad, anukut, heaps of rice, lots and lots. And then it's very liberally distributed to everyone. We have the description of Madhavendra Puri holding the festival for Gopal, and the Gopal, the deity, is like this. And now that deity who Madhavendra Puri worshipped is Srinathji in Nathdwara. He liked to go there. He liked to reproduce Vrindavan there. <coughs> so uh, it's described how day after day after day, after re-establishing the deity, they'd hold a festival and different people would come and they'd feed everyone even the even the lowest class of people who are considered rejected from civilization and 
Even the dogs, they're all fed. So one important point we get is liberality in distributing prasadam. That everyone can come and take. Another thing is there are no shortages. Krishna gives enough. Nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitananam eko bahunam yo vidathati karaman. Krishna is that one who supplies the necessities of everybody. So one indirect message. An indirect message we can glean from Govardhan Puja is there are no shortages. And Srila Prabhupada often spoke about this. Uh, everything is there in this world. Purna om Purnam adaha Purnam idam Purna Purnam udachate Purnasya eva hmm? Purnam eva adaya Purnam eva vishishate Purnasya Purnam adaya So Srila Prabhupada, he gave a translation of this verse which is uh, it's very, very different to the one the Mayavadis will give. <laughs> and very, very different to that which even other Vaishnav Sampradayas give. But Srila Prabhupada translated it as Krishna is complete and he's... Well, I'll read the translation Srila Prabhupada gave. The personality of Godhead is perfect and complete. The word Purna can be translated into English as perfect and complete. Both words. Because he is completely perfect, all emanations from him, such as this phenomenal world, are perfectly equipped as a complete whole. Whatever is produced of the complete whole is also complete in itself. Because he is the complete whole, even though so many complete units emanate from him, he remains the complete balance. And Srila Prabhupada describes how in this explanation of this verse, how Krishna has created this world with all the necessities that we require. Earth, water, fire, air, ether, whatever we need, Krishna has given so that we can live in this with Every living being, the necessities are provided for every living being. Krishna has arranged it. According to... Uh, they talk about ancient mythology. So according to modern mythology, uh, there was nothing and it exploded. And then uh, it all fell into place and all the, all the planets were there and all the life forms gradually evolved from chemicals and all the laws of nature were automatically there in place. Just scientific, scientifically, all the laws of nature were created from nothing. Don't laugh. This is science, my boy. So, uh, we don't believe this. Claptrap, humbug, Brummingham, balderdash, and there are other words for nonsense. Should have probably used to use the word nonsense. We don't accept that. Krishna made everything. Directly and indirectly. Anvayad vyatireka bhyam. Krishna makes everything, directly or indirectly. And he provides everything. There's enough for everyone. There should be no hunger in the world. Why is there hunger in the world? Uh, there's a saying in English that there's, there's enough in the world for man's need, but not for his greed. God has given enough for what we need. But the greed, there's no end. As Vamanadev told Bali Maharaj that even, there's, if, even if you get everything in the whole world, it's not enough to satisfy your desire for someone who is of a greedy nature. For one who has material desires, they'll never be satisfied. They'll go on wanting more and more and more and more and more. So we, for our needs, we have enough. Srila Prabhupada gave one example. That 
there was one Raja in Krishnanagar and there was some Brahmana living. He went to the Brahmana's house, so he's living a very poor way and said, well, can I give you something? No. Well, how are you living? He said, well, you see, that, uh, I have some disciples. I go out and beg a little rice every day and there's the, the tree. We take some leaves. That would be, the, I guess, there are not many trees you eat the leaves of. In Bengal, there's the uh, drumstick tree, but they don't eat the leaves. There. They only eat the anyway. So, uh, and I'm living like that. I don't. I, I'm, the king can't imagine. He has a whole apparatus with all the tax collectors, at different levels, and they bring it to him. And he has a huge treasury. And someone's just living there. Hardly, hardly cloth to cover their body and. Yeah, I'm satisfied. What? What? You want to give me? What can you give me? I don't. I, I don't need gold or jewels or any such thing. So greed is unlimited. But the, again, in the Varnashram system, there are systems to regulate that, so that the Kshatriyas and the Vaishyas they're interested in building up their wealth. They're both interested in wealth. But they have a duty to distribute it also. Not that they just amass more and more and more and more and more. So there should be no shortages in the world. One reason there are shortages is that we have created artificial necessities. That's, that term is oxymoronic. It means that it's, it's like saying a square circle, something like that. You can't have a square circle. So if something's actually a necessity, it's a real necessity. You don't have to say a real necessity. So artificial necessity. How many of you have got the latest iPhone? 90% of your life is wasted. Let's be realistic, 99%. You need to have the latest iPhone. You're right, you need it. Do you? Do you really need it? But it's, it's considered a necessity, iPhone or smartphone or whatever it is. It's considered a necessity. You have to, have, but it's not required to live. So that's one reason why there's shortages, because we've created artificial necessities. Cloths we don't need. We, we just some simple cloths we can wear, but then they've created fashions and so on. And so on. And no end of the desire, stoking up the desire like a fire. Stoking, that's a word. To stoke a fire means to, to poke it with a poker and it makes the fire blaze up. So the the they call it the advertising industry. I don't know why they call it an industry, because in industry you should produce something, right? But they call it the advertising industry. Uh, they produce desire in people. And in s people's desires at the present time and their morality is dictated by advertisements and what they see on the TV and and cinema and YouTube. The, 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 the culture is shaped by people who want to exploit us so they can get more money from us. This is modern life. So Srila Prabhupada advocated simple living, high thinking. And we should, we have in, we have in ISKCON the World Holy Name Week and the, the, December Marathon. Actually, I, I'm not in very much in favor of World Holy Name Week because it's, every day should be World Holy Name Day, right? So, and so they have this. It's just like the Karmis. They have Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, Epileptics Day. I'm not sure if they made that, but it's probably everything. <laughs> it's uh, Save the Whales Day. and Every day is something. They, they made Yoga World Yoga Day 
So in ISKCON we're filling up the... So why don't we have at least once, <laughs> once a year on Govardhan Puja we can think of simple living and high thinking. Actually it should be every day Prabhupada wanted this. At least once a year we can wave the flag and say simple living, high thinking. But no, it's like the World Holy Name Day. It's, it's, we should be doing it every day. We shouldn't have to have something special because we should be doing it every day we, to remind us, oh, holy name. Uh, oh yeah, I, I, yeah, I remember that verse. We used to say, Hare Nama, Hare. Oh yeah, okay, right, for one week. Hare Nama, Hare Nama. It's, it's every day. So same thing, simple living, high thinking, every day. We should be doing so shortages, why are there shortages? Food shortage. Srila Prabhupada said that if managed properly, the, the earth can produce enough food to support ten times the present population. What's the, pre what's the present population of the world? Anyone? Seven, eight, something between seven and eight billion, is it? They say. We say population. That's the humans. What about the cows and the uh, so many living beings? Okay, something between seven and eight. It's about eight billion now. It's eight billion. Okay, so the world when Srila Prabhupada was here is probably about six billion. I don't know. Probably, let's say it was six billion. So sixty billion people. Could be. The Prabhupada said there's so much land I've seen unused. Here in Tamil Nadu, so, many, so much land is unused, being grown over with thorn bushes because no one bothers to cultivate it. Because if you cultivate it, you, you make an economic loss due to strange policies. Now the government is changing. They're, they're changing their farm policies. Or oh, they just made new laws. So let's see what what happens to that. But even then, people are growing coffee uh, here in South India. So much coffee has grown. Tea. They're not useful. They, it doesn't give any nourishment. What else? Tobacco. Huge amount of acreage all over the world it goes to tobacco. Not only does it not do any good, but it's very harmful to health. So the land could be utilized. Srila Prabhupada is very practical in this regard. He didn't, he wasn't just talking about let's go to Goloka Vrindavan. He was saying, let's make Vrindavan here. And practically, by simple living, high thinking, depending on the land, the cows, and Krishna. And another major way that, that the the food could support a much larger population is if they stop this meat industry. They grow so much, f huge amounts of grains are used, especially soya beans, they grow, and they feed the animals, and then they slaughter the animals and eat the animal. But instead of slaughtering the animal, if you feed the grains to the humans, you could support a much bigger population. And what to speak of food that is, I don't know if they still do that, but that was definitely happening at least up to the 1970s because Srila Prabhupada was told about that, how to keep the, 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 the governments promote the cultivation of a certain crop and then they get too much of it and then it becomes uneconomical even to sell it. So they just throw huge amounts in the sea. At the present time in India, there's a huge, the government has promoted the cultivation of, of uh, sugar cane. So much, there's a massive surplus and they're selling overseas at a loss. So, better management. With better management, instead of, th instead of promoting one crop and then you, there's too much of it for, for the need of the people because even in India, people can only eat so much sugar, and then diabe diabetic people are not, and there are plenty of them, don't, not supposed to eat it, and people don't want to get obese, so they cut down on their sugar consumption. 
So uh, just don't produce so much. And that's a whole big discussion. I, anyway, I'm not at all an expert in these things, but the uh, economic theory, let the market find its own level. That's why you need good vaishas. They, 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 they know how to produce food and they know what's needed. And even uh, what can be profitable and this and that. Of course, in the, in the older village system, there was just producing food within... There wasn't that you produce... You produce uh, ginger in India and export it to Italy. Just the other day I was in Bangalore. Uh, one young man told me he's, he's got a contract for exporting ginger to Italy. Well, <laughs> that's, it's an over-endeavor, isn't it? You can, you can grow enough food in Italy to feed all the people. It, it's been going on since time immemorial. So, but then they want to have ginger. I don't know if you could grow ginger there. Maybe you can. You can grow rice in southern Italy. It's, it's warm enough. So, but then you do without it. So a little, uh, little sanity, <laughs> little sanity would help the world a lot, right? So in farming policies also, and just in insane policies. So Srila Prabhupada, he gave some idea. Um, there, there should be no, sh there should be no shortage. It's, it's mismanagement and greed. These two items combined make for food shortage. And we're not talking about Krishna consciousness here. We're talking practical things. Here's a quote from Srila Prabhupada. There are millions and millions of animals all over the world and Krishna is supplying them all with food. Actually, there is no scarcity of food. There is a scarcity of food, but Prabhupada said there is no scarcity. It means the scarce, there's no intrinsic scarcity. Human beings sometimes experience a scarcity of food, Srila Prabhupada says, because they misuse their advanced consciousness. Therefore, they are put into trouble. If people would take up Krishna consciousness, all these troubles would be finished. Srila Prabhupada sent out a letter to all the temple presidents, I believe it was 1976. He said that we should have Whoever comes to our temple, we should give them hot puris and sabji and halava prasadam. Everyone who comes, sit them down, give them a plate of prasadam. And, he's, and he, Srila Prabhupada reading the minds of his temple presidents, thinking, where's the money going to come from? <laughs> Prabhupada said, you don't worry, Radharani, you're worshipping Radharani, she is Lakshmi, she can provide everything. You should immediately start this program. I don't know if anyone ever instituted it. But Krishna provides everything for everyone. Srila Prabhupada said that there are millions of elephants in the jungles in Africa. Sometimes Prabhupada would exaggerate a bit. And they're all eating. They all get enough food by the grace of Krishna. Of course, in Africa, they made certain policies and then they, they cut the jungles and then the elephants weren't getting food. And then they, some years ago, they killed 40,000 elephants. Horrible rascals, huh? these demons. They, they mess things up. They're expert at... They, they have all these programs which they think are going to improve things and they just make a big mess. Why don't they just admit it? They just had the American president election. And, uh, why don't they just admit we're all just a bunch of idiots? Because most people think they are anyway. It's just, who do you vote for? This idiot or that idiot? The main, uh, shouldn't be talking about politics, but the main reason the new guy got voted in was not because people think he's going to do a good job, because they were so fed up of the old guy. <laughs> They thought he couldn't do as bad as that guy, so let's try someone else. And even if he messes it up, at least 
And if he also messes it up, but at least it'll be messed up in a different way. I'll get a little variety. So <laughs> variety is the spice of life. Of course, I don't think you're going to get such, a, such an entertaining president as the one who's <laughs> supposed to be out, but he's not quite out yet. Anyway, uh, the point gross mismanagement all over the world. The Krishna conscious movement is supposed to give guidance how people can live, live a sane life, and we have to show it ourselves. First of all, Krishna, yeah, Krishna's feeding the elephants, and he's feeding the, the, the elephant needs so, so much, I, I don't know exactly, so much food. They're, they're very uh, wasteful eaters. Have you seen children? Sometimes they, you give them a plate and they eat something and they, they scatter it here and there and they only eat a little bit and they scatter it all. So the elephants are something like they eat. They eat all this stuff and they hardly digest it. They pass out stool and then their stool is all under, most of it's undigested. So, but then the elephant stool also goes back into the ecosystem and this. And, but they're, they're, they, they're very uh, uneconomic eaters, elephants. But they get their food, huge amount of food. So Srila Prabhupada said, uh, yeah, in this letter in which he said the, that you feed everyone who comes, Prabhupada said, we can feed everyone. We can feed everyone. And we practically see, here at Iskon Salem, for instance, that if we have that attitude, we just want to give, let people come, let them take prasadam. Uh, and people, they, they appreciate, they can, they can appreciate the mood. And then they like to give also, at least here in India. But I, this will be replicated throughout the world. We, there's that uh, Hare Krishna food for all in London. And Parashuram and his associates for years, they just, they just get food somehow or other and they, they get the, the, the vegetables which are thrown away. You know why they throw away so many vegetables? Because they're growing the carrot and if it's not straight, they can't sell it because people want straight carrots. So if it's, it's, it's a curly carrot, they, they throw it away. It's insane. So Parashuram goes and collects it and he cooks and he distributes. And people have seen over years and years that they're just they they're feeding, and they go as devotees all the time with tilak, and they do kirtan and everything. They're not trying to hide their devotees. So and people appreciate, and then they they they're giving them money and food and so many things because they appreciate. Oh, they they're actually doing something selfless. That's that's very unusual. That people they dedicate their life to act for the benefit of others, and they. They don't. They may not appreciate so much that we're distributing books because they don't have enough prasadam to appreciate the value of what's in the books. But uh, they're pretty. Oh, oh, they're feeding people and they're doing it selflessly. So, say if if we if we just give give prasadam, temples are meant especially for one major function of a temple: profuse distribution of prasadam. Everyone who comes, give them prasadam. And Krishna will send, Krishna will inspire other people. Krishna gives enough for everyone. Now they have in, in India, they've introduced everywhere all over the world, pesticides. But previously, the, the birds would come and take a little of the grain and people, they, 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 that, that's, that's meant for them. They wouldn't stop that. Now we have locusts flying, flying in from Africa. But there was a solution to that also. Of course, they didn't come all the way from Africa previously. But they, the people would plant the neem trees, and that's very good for, you need for brushing your teeth and neem trees, and then the locusts won't come. So everything Krishna, he's, if we follow the ancient system, everything will work out very nicely. That's, Krishna's providing enough food for everyone. You see this lemon tree at the back with those big lemons? So, what was that, about two, two and a half months ago, I just came back to Salem and the, this squirrel was coming. There were so many flowers, we were thinking, oh, we're going to get so many lemons. And then the squirrel came and was eating all the little flower buds. And we think, thinking, oh, what are, now the squirrel's ruining everything. 
but the tree is still giving so many lemons. Didn't eat all the flower buds. So the, the squirrel got his food and the lemons are in profusion and maybe if the squirrel hadn't eaten all those flowers we wouldn't have got so many lemons or they'd all be very weak because the, if the tree has to, it's just like a mother if she has, she gives birth to one child that's a, hard on the system. If she gives birth to two at a time or three at a time or four at a time then it's, it's a great strain. So in the same way, anyway the point I'm making is that Krishna provides for everyone. We should have that faith. And just, he's also given humans brain, we're supposed to organize the Vaishyas. Typical Vaishyas, they're expert in organizing agriculture. Because it needs some organization also. Even people talk about permaculture, but that also, you have to know what you're doing. Uh, needs some organize and, and an expert Vaishya, he'll take the land, and he'll produce, every, every inch will be covered. There'll be one crop, another crop next to it, growing with it, and the, the two crops, they work synergetically, and they know all these things. They know, when to, they know when to plant, when to, when to uh, replant, when to harvest, all these things. We were just discussing also, was that last night? that you have to do the ancient system. They have these panchangs where you see all the astrological information. The main reason people had that was not for wedding dates. The main thing is for agriculture because you have to plant such and such a crop under such and such a nakshatra. Then it will come very nicely. And Sri Ram was telling me, yes, we've been doing that and we're getting very good crops. So we have to revive all this ancient culture. All the, the modernization means degradation, means disaster. So we should know that uh, Govardhan Puja is a day to resolve that yes, we have to institute Srila Prabhupada's simple living, high thinking, show people how to live as human beings. You don't need factories. You don't need uh, pollution. You don't need overcrowded cities. Live simply, chant Hare Krishna, worship the cows, worship the devotees, go Brahmana Hitayacha, follow in the footsteps of Krishna, who personally demonstrated how to worship the cows, how to worship the devotees. Haridasa Varya, Giriraj, Govratham. Hare Krishna, all glories to his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Sri Giri Raja Govardhan Ki Jai. Giridhari Bhagavan Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.